okay? Is it, is it okay if I have her? Uh, everybody is seeing me. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Marquez, uh, Luis asked whether you mind if we record the-, the No, seminar. yeah, you can, you can record, I'm sure. Okay, okay. I start. Um, okay, just one second. I will keep my uh, camera on so you would not be alone. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Luis. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, right. Welcome to the Heliophysics and Space Geophysics seminars promoted by the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research, INPI. In particular, this seminar is hosted by the Research in Heliophysics uh, program and uh, by the uh, Space Geophysics Postgraduate Program at INPI. And this program is, is sponsored by CAPES Funding Agency. Our guest today is Dr. José Paulo Marquesi from the China-Brazil Joint Laboratory for Space Weather China and uh, the National Institute for Space Research, INPI. Dr. Marquesi obtained his undergraduate degree in physics at the Federal University of Santa Maria, where he started working in space physics at the current Southern Space Coordination of INPI. Um, sorry, a little bit, I lost my... Yeah, and uh, at, at that time, he joined uh, the <clears throat> NanoSat CBR 1 and 2 nanosatellite project, which is a cooperation between INPI and the University of Santa Maria. After his studies in Santa Maria, he moved to INPI in São José dos Campos, where he obtained his doctoral degree in space geophysics. <clears throat> During his doctoral work, he had an internship of one year at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. His research focused on Earth radiation belts, in particular on interaction between relativistic electrons and ULF waves. So on behalf of WIMPI, I would like to thank Dr. Marquesi for accepting our invitation to present this seminar. So I leave that to you, Marquesi, for giving the title and the, uh, the presentation. And we ask the audience to mute their microphones during the presentations, the, the presentation. And if you want to ask questions, you can do it at the end or you can post them at the chat and we will be happy to read them at the end. Or if you prefer, you can ask the question yourself. It's all yours, my case. All right. Thank you. Uh, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Thank you for this introduction, Alison. And the, the title of my presentation is the electron flux variability and ULF waves activity on the outer radiation belt under the influence of ICME and high speed stream. Uh, and high speed is, is this is in statistical analysis from the Olive Van Allen probe there. All right. So this is these are the, the the collaboration team that I, I worked we work together and this um, during all my doctor degree and now uh, doing this new project. And so the uh, outline of this presentation is a brief introduction on the uh, wave particle interaction and the radiation belts, the methodology uh, used to select the data and extract information, some results and some conclusions. Okay. Uh, the region uh, uh, now called the Van Allen radiation belts or were first, first uh, observed by the Explorer 1 and 3 satellites that detected the two regions with the counting rates uh, higher than expected at the time uh, with particles different from, uh, from uh, uh, cosmic rays at the time. And the, here, the picture on the, the left is the counting rates uh, published in 19, back 1958. And the, those measurements are, are made by the, the James, Dr. James Van Allen team, who, who idealized the uh, Geiger counter 
for this experiment that detected this out uh, this uh, unknown uh, uh, particles region with the particles. This these regions were uh, after naming the Van Allen radiation belts uh, in honor to the James Van Allen. Uh, so the the classical view of the radiation belts were later the, the, this those two uh, two regions were later studied by uh, a couple of missions that were devoted to study the the uh, particle content in the inner magnetosphere, especially the Van Allen probe missions between 2012 and 2019. And the, 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 those regions are uh, mainly two, uh, uh, two regions, one inner region composed mainly by protons with energies between hundreds of keV up to hundreds of MeV and are situated around one and two Earth radii. And an outer regions, uh, mainly fueled by electrons with energies between hundreds of kV and tens of MeV and are situated around three and six Earth radii. Radi uh, those regions are uh, a distribution of particles around the Earth. The particles are trapped in the magnetic field. Uh, due to the ma magnetic field topology here, they gyrate uh, around the, the magnetic field lines, bounce between the poles, and drift around the, the Earth magnetospheres. Each of, of those movements are associated with some constant that we called adiabatic invariant, that it must remain constant uh, in order to the, the particles remains in the, the position, right? One constant is related to the gyro movement around the Earth, uh, around the magnetic field lines. The other uh, constant is related to the bouncing between the magnetic field, uh, the magnetic poles. And the third one is related to the, the drift around the, the magnetosphere. Right? Each of those uh, movements have, have a characteristic uh, period of time. Uh, the gyro motion is around milliseconds, the, the bounce motion is around second, the, and the Drift motions is around uh, minutes, the characteristic period. Here we are interested uh, just on the, the third adiabatic invariant. Uh, we are interested in the violation of this, this third uh, this third adiabatic invariant, uh, while the other remains constant. This is because the this uh, characteristic period is comparable to the ULF waves uh, frequency range. The, uh, the, there is a uh, magnetosphere cavity resonance that are comparable to this uh, characteristic period. So they can interact and change the energy of those particles. Here is a, a, a cartoon showing some uh, structures hitting the magnetospheres. And that that produced some some instabilities here on the on the magnetospheres that can be that, that, that can propagate it to inner magnetospheres and resonance with uh, the electrons. Uh, the there's a, a whole bunch of kind of waves that are generated in the magnetospheres. Uh, the mainly are they are uh, small plasma perturbations, and the, the we can detect a wide range of frequencies in the magnetosphere. Here we are interested in this uh, ULF uh, frequency range, here. mainly the magnetic uh, cavity resonance. Uh, those perturbations can be generated by uh, some interaction with interplanetary uh, structures, such as 
inter, in, in, uh, interplanetary coronal mass ejections exemplified here on the lab. Uh, and high speed streams, a solar wind uh, exemplified here. Those, those uh, structures heat, the heat magnetospheres and can generate uh, a whole uh, spectrum of frequencies in the magnetospheres through the interaction with uh, particles with, in the, the, the Earth's magnetic fields or uh, pressure, pressure uh, you know, variations and a, a lot of uh, mechanisms that can generate those waves. Uh, we are here I, I'm showing those uh, figures because we selected our events based on, on flux vari variability due to those, uh, those uh, interplanetary events, right? They can generate, as I said, a lot of uh, uh, frequency ranges in the magnetos in the, uh, the magnetospheres. And here we were interested just on this, this frequency band here uh, on the ULF. We selected those frequencies because they can, uh, they are, uh, the frequencies are proximal, uh, uh, close to the, the drift frequency in the mag mag magnetospheres. And from the instruments, we, uh, the instruments uh, the, uh, measure, measure the data in, in the frequency, in the cadence that can be, uh, it, that these waves can be struck. So uh, this is an uh, example of how those waves can be detected in the spacecraft, for instance. Here on the left is a uh, shock hitting the, the magnetosphere. Here there's a um, satellite and the measurement made by the satellite can show us like when the, in the instant when the, the, the structure hits the magnetospheres, uh, it can uh, generate some uh, instant uh, fluctuation in, in the uh, magnetic field, the, the total magnetic field recorded by this satellite. And if you struck the waveform information, it appears like that. Um, enhancement in the amplitude here and here uh, and some continuous package for ULF waves, right? And the instant of shock here, I'm not shown, but the higher frequency can be detected and some impulsive uh, fluctuations as well. So this is important to extract all these uh, uh, components uh, in order to use in the uh, models for the radial diffusion inside the radiation belts. The interaction between the particles uh, and the, the, those, those waves are stochastic, uh, stochastic process and they obey the resonance condition given by this equation, where this is the, the drift uh, frequency, here's the mode, uh, this, uh, the wave number, and here's the frequency uh, of resonance. Uh, this is uh, the, the structure of this uh, wave uh, perturbation is important to to uh, estimate the diffusion coefficients uh, that can be used to estimate how the 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 diffusion rates occur in the in the inner in the outer radiation belts right to do that we must extract the, the power spectrum density for this the, for those waves and estimate the diffusion coefficients uh, uh, for each L shell in the spheres. Uh, so we can estimate how the diffusion will, will happen in the, in the radiation belt. And so some models are proposed by, for this uh, uh, 
for those uh, diffusion coefficients, uh, both for the electric field and the magnetic field uh, for in the in, for the Earth's magnetospheres, and they are related to the air shell of the Earth in, in the Earth's radii and the power spectrum uh, density uh, for each uh, mode of, of oscillation, uh, both for the magnetic field and the electric field measurement in, in, in the Earth. The total, uh, the total uh, coefficient, diffusion coefficient is the sum of, of two. Uh, in this, those cases, it's important to extract the, you know, we must consider the, the polarization modes in this for introduce the in the, the equations because some some polarizations uh, are more effective to generate electric fields that, that can accelerate or uh, the, the particles. Here I, I show an example of some modes of uh, oscillation in the, the, the magnetic field. If you, you consider um, a, compression, a compression in the magnetosphere, a compression mode in the magnetosphere, it can generate uh, uh, electric fields in the uh, azimuthal uh, component here in the electric field. And this can uh, be more effective in order to uh, interact in the, with the particles drifting around the Earth. Uh, so this import is important to uh, extract in the, co uh, the coordinated uh, system that can uh, extract the, the, the polarization modes in the, the magnetosphere. Here we consider a field aligned coordinate system. And for the magnetic field, we extracted the, the parallel component of uh, the magnetic field. These are related to the compressional mode and as well with the azimuthal and radio components with the electric field, right? Those uh, power spectrum density are used to estimate the, the diffusion coefficients, but uh, they, they are some based on, the, on some magnetic, geomagnetic indices such as Kp index. This is an estimation uh, of the, the diffusion coefficients as well as the power spectrum density based on KP index. But this empirical, they, they're called empirical models. Uh, they, they are not uh, so well estimated for uh, some, uh, from, for uh, lower geomagnetic activity because the, the statistic used here consider KP, uh, 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 higher KP events. So those kind of uh, uh, estimation here doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, model with uh, so higher accuracy uh, periods of uh, lowering, lower uh, geomagnetic activity. Here's the motivation of this, this work. Since uh, in the, the past year, we are in the, in the lower uh, solar, solar activity. So we have a, a lot of high speed stream events that can, cannot generate high, higher uh, geomagnetic, geomagnetic storms. But as we can see later, they, they can uh, 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 remove or enhance the particles as well as in the higher uh, magnetic intensity. So here we are proposing uh, some estimation of those uh, power spectrum density based on those different structures. And for later, try to model this, this uh, uh, diffusion coefficient based on the directive power spectrum density for different solar wind structures, right? So uh, to do that, we, we get data from October 2012 up to 
December 2017. Uh, they are from the interplanetary medium, inner magnetospheres, and some ground-based geomagnetic data just to uh, compare the, the, the ULF waves uh, activity. Uh, this comprises the, this this comprises all the the, the von Allen probes uh, used there. So from the interplanetary medium, we use the ACE satellite that gives us the interplanetary magnetic field measurements, solar wind speed, dynamic pressure, proton density, and they and it has a temporal resolution around uh, from one second that is good to extract all this uh, uh, ELF wave uh, frequency ranges. We use it from data from the outer radiation belts from the Van Allen probes, uh, from the relativistic electron flux uh, density, at uh, the low, lower, uh, low energy flux density from my guys, the magnetic field from the emphasis instrument, the electric field, and I also have a temporal resolution around one second. Yeah. All this data was, was stored in a, a database in order to, uh, to make it easier to, uh, to extract the, the periods uh, on the, uh, the statistical analysis. And uh, it's a quick, quick way and does uh, uses a lot of memory in the in computer. So we chose to start all the, the downloaded data and, and work with a database here to, to make all this analysis. Uh, so the, the methodology here is we, for this, the, the event selection, we, we use it for the, those some catalogs available on, online and are published already. The ICME events uh, were selected by the Kane and Richardson list available in these websites. And we selected all the, the interplanetary events uh, with uh, magnetic clouds from all the from 2000 and October 2012 up to uh, December 2017, and we selected all the events that were related to, to some changes in the high energy electron flux measurement by the von Allen probes. We did the, the same the same survey for the high speed stream events. We selected from this this repository, and here we selected all the the events that were uh, uh, identified by the ACE satellite, right? Those, those uh, criteria uh, were to guarantee that the structure was, was directed to the Earth. And some, it can be related to the changes in the, the, in the high energy electron flux. So we, separated after all the, the for all the, the events we instructed we, we instructed the electron flux measurement by the uh, wrapped instrument uh, the Allen probes and we selected at the the instant event date uh, showed here by this black black line and we it took three days before and three days after this event and struck all the data, uh, electron flux data between those uh, uh, between those uh, this uh, period, this time period, for all the, the events for the ICME and high speed stream events. Here is just an example uh, of the uh, catalog we made. And for each of those e events, we uh, selected a cut here in L, L star equal five. Uh, this, is, this was because here is where, where this is the region where we see the high fluctuation in the, 
the high energy electrons. And we, we structured this cut at L equal five here. Let's show some this pattern here, right? And for a, a 20, uh, 48 hours uh, window before and after the event stand instant, we find we we, we look to our the the minimum in the electron flux density, right? We, we took the average before and after and uh, after the, this the, the, this minimum, if the the difference of was from higher than one order magnitude, we separated the events in in enhancement when this there is a uh, enhancement in the flux after the, this minimum and reduction events when when the the flux uh, is reduced after this uh, minimum minimum point here right we did it for all the, uh, we, our data database and compile the the flux and this the this uh, 48 hour windows were were choose to select the the zero time uh, zero epoch here for the superposed uh, epoch analysis and we analyzed all the, the flux uh, high energy electron flux data and the solar wind parameters for uh, a time interval uh, 50 hours before the time zero and 90 hours after the time zero here's just an example of this uh, analysis right? and here we define it how is we define it the, the zero epoch here as a minimum value of flux at l star equal equal five right and all the for all these events we we extracted uh the the ulf waves uh, frequency range we applied a, a bus pen a band pass uh, filter and the, the uh, the ULF frequency range, and then apply the wavelet transform to struck the the power spectrum density of, of the those waves, and we in, integrated between the in, in the the frequency range of uh, PC five up to PC three, and here to now I'm showing some results of those analysis. Here's an overview of the of events of the events. We selected uh, 49 ICME events, 17 was uh, related to enhancement, 16 to reductions, and 140 uh, high speed stream events, 51 related to enhancement, and 28 related to reduction. Here I'm saying related, but they are they are associated. They, for each of those events, uh, a change in the flux happened. So, and then we classified the, the change as enhancement and reduction, right? Just the, to, class, to classify the events. Here we can see on the left on the, the A panel here that after 2013, there's a much higher counting of high speed stream events than ICMEs. And we can expect it after that. So not so uh, high geomagnetic uh, geomagnetic activity in the Earth, but they also uh, produces a lot of changes in the radiation belts, uh, particle flux. All right. Uh, and the events with no change in the flux, uh, we not we did not consider. Uh, for for this for this study. Mm, here are some results for the ICME events. Uh, here on, on the, the left, we can see the the the, the superposed app analysis for the high energy electron flux things that are we call five uh, for the solar wind uh, flow speed the BZ component and the A index for all the, the enhancement cases related to ICMEs. And 
you can see some uh, the the uh, the blue line here represents the the median value, and the dashed red lines are the upper and lower quartile for this this uh, superposed app analysis. And the, the mean uh, values of solar wind speed peaks on the, the uh, 450 kilometers per second. The dynamic pressure are not shown here, but it peaks around 10. And nanopascals, the BZ is around minus, minus eight nanotesla for the enhanced events. And the AE index has a peak around six teslas and rapidly decreases uh, to below two, uh, two, uh, 250 nanotesla of the, the time zero. For the reduction cases, here on the, the right, uh, the, the solar wind velocities is also around 40, 450 kilometers per second. The depression dynamic is a little bit lower than the, the enhancement. And the, the BZ is also lower in module for around minus five nanotesla. And here for the, the electron flux variability, you can see a, a clear difference here that for enhancement related to ICNEs, the, the enhancement is rapid and, and remains high for the period. While when for the reduction cases, the reduction is, uh, is decreases slowly and remains at the at this, at this uh, lower value for the entire period. Uh, as well, so if you see the, the BZ component for those events, for the enhancement events, they are at, uh, a peak here minus, from minus 10, and it remains uh, negative values while the, the flux enhances here. And after that, it, it oscillates around, around zero. It has a similar pattern happened here for the uh, AE index, but for the time zero, there's a, a peak on the, the AE index. And after that, it reduces to below 2000, that to 250 nanotesla. And it, for for the enhancement and for the reductions, it has a small peak here on the around 2,200, sorry, 150 nanotesla, and did not show significant changes during the period. You can see a clear difference between those uh, those patterns here. All right, and for the high speed stream events, there are. Uh, uh, similarities here, uh, as like you can see here on the enhancement on solar wind speed here during the enhancement and not great, great changes here during the reduction cases, right? And the BZ component, it also shows a negative value here, uh, uh, higher than the the magnetic the, for the ICM events, but remains uh, in, in negative values on average for a, for a period that the the electron flux starts to uh, do increase, here. and the I, the A index also show a, a different behavior here for the enhancement events. They peak on uh, as often as the zero zero epoch here. And after that, it remains high, not so high, uh, but around uh, 215, 500 nanotesla, and remains uh, constant uh, at the, this, intent, this intent, intention, I fluctuating uh, for all the, the period that the electron flux 
remains uh, enhancing here. And you can see a difference between the high speed stream and the ICMEs here on the electron flux variability. And here for the high speed stream, the increase is, is gradually in slow uh, and continuous growth as the solar wind flow speed uh, remains at high values and the AE index are higher. The <coughs> for the reduction uh, cases, we did not see those, those uh, characters. We see an enhancement and low enhancement in AE index, but did not reach on, on average 250 narrow test and remains low uh, for the, the period. Uh, while the BZ components remains on average at zero or some points at positive values here. Um, for, we did this, this analysis also for the, the power spectrum density. Here's, uh, I, I can show for the power spectrum density uh, analysis for the ICME events. Here is an example for L equal five. We can see uh, uh, enhancement on the, the, the power spectrum uh, during the enhancement events. Uh, well, for the reduction, we did not see a clear pattern here. And there's a, uh, a growth here before the, the time zero and after the week, we can see a higher, high power, uh, power, power density after the, this time zero here, right? And this, it's, it, this power spectrum density, this pattern here also, also happened for lower L shells. And we did for the all uh, for L shells for, uh, from 3.5 up, up to uh, five, the magnetospheres, and you can see this pattern for for the the enhancement and reduction cases for ICME. Uh, the the superposed an uh, uh, analysis for the high speed stream events also show a, a similar behavior for the enhancement cases uh, with uh, some more. Uh, a more smooth uh, behavior and peaks when this the, the flux starts to increase uh, in the uh, the in the L equal five here shown here and for reduction cases we see an enhancement on average for in the for the AULF uh, power spectrum density but it did not show some uh, um, some characteristic behavior here yeah, as it happens for all our shells. And just to compare here for the enhancement cases here for high C ICME and high speed stream, the uh, ICMEs, the, the flux increases rapidly after the time zero. And while for the high speed streams, it increases slowly and more it gradually increases. And if you remember the AE index in both cases are higher here on the time zero, but the, the intensity are, are much slower for the high speed stream the, as this ICME. But in the difference here is the way of the high speed stream, it remains high for the all period and uh, for of enhancement here. It's important because it can suggest that those uh, high intensity in the AE activity can generate the uh, ULF waves and are injecting energy here that can accelerate those particles, right? And the opposite behavior happened for the uh, reduction cases here. And it, they are, much more similar than the enhancement events. And if you uh, 
uh, remember the, the interplanetary events, the, 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 param the parameters are similar for those reduction cases, right? And these, these, those mechanisms generate uh, ULF waves in, the, in the different patterns with uh, high intensity for the enhancement events here and lower intensity for the reduction, reduction cases. So the, the different uh, solar structures can generate different patterns of power spectrum things that can be uh, related to enhancement or reduction cases in the uh, outer radiation belts. Right? With all this data, we try to estimate some diffusion, uh, the, uh, to estimate the power spectrum density across the L shells. Uh, this could this could be helpful helpful to estimate the, the diffusion coefficients. To do that, we took data from all the 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 period and struck the, the Fourier transform for all this uh, for the B parallel component, uh, the electric field on azimuthal and radio uh, radio com, uh, components. And we did uh, this uh, a similar epoch analysis for the uh, this power spectrum density, uh, separating the the intensity in this uh, geomagnetic uh, perturbations in L shells beam, in M M MLT beam, and also in L shell. Here I'm showing uh, five point five uh, L example for ICN events. And uh, we, to do the, this kind of uh, uh, integration on the power spectrum density, select the medium value or all the magnetic and electric field and each, each MLT beam. We perform an average uh, across the MLT beam. And for each these L shell beams, uh, we integrated in the in the uh, ELF frequency range shown here. And this is uh, to try to estimate the, the pattern in the L shell. And here I'm, I'm showing the, uh, the result doing that. The, the, curve, the blue and orange curves are the uh, power spectrum density estimated using the, the data from uh, high speed stream on orange and ICME data in, in blue. In here, compared to the estimated using the, the, the equations proposed by Ozik at all, and we see a similar behavior, but a much uh, smaller uh, intensity here, both for the, the parallel component power and the azimuthal electric field. Right? This could be uh, incorporated on those uh, equations and uh, try to estimate the, the diffusion coefficients and considering different, uh, different uh, solar wind structures. And to conclude, so the, we, we see that the outer radiation flux is related uh, to typical tendons for some solar wind stream parameters. The ULF waves uh, present on every higher amplitude and persistence for enhancement cases. Did not show on average any typical tendency related flux decrease. And the profile of ULF waves versus L shell contribution is very similar for those uh, ICMEs and high speed stream events. Right? And the general solar wind uh, parameters seems to be smoother when you consider events that are related to reduction and the outer radiation belts. The mean ULF uh, wave uh, and the PC5 wave, wave frequency have similar be behaviors. Uh, and we know that ULF waves are going to be driving the solar wind condition, are driven by solar wind condition. And 
uh, the empirical models apply the, to quantify this integrated power, they overestimate the power measurements at all L shells. It could happen because the empirical models consider all the cases of events and do not separate the uh, uh, higher uh, intensities, uh, high semis intensities or uh, high speed streams uh, with higher fluctuations. They did not separate that as well and could be could explain the difference on the in, empirical uh, estimation in the, the measurements that we get. And response in the auto radiation belts, uh, they are drifting, as I said, to just to finish. And they, they, this shows importance to diff, they analyze the different solar destructions in the radiation belts and did not, not essentially related to geomagnetic storm because here we did not select our events based on the, the, the perturbation of the magnetic field. We just selected based on the, the solar wind structure. And this can help us to analyze uh, the electron flux variability and maybe uh, presents a new framework to analyze this flux variation after the, the, it starts to increase and happen to, and what happens uh, due to these uh, perturbations. Okay. Thank you, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marquesi. Very nice presentation. So as a suggestion from Luis Eduardo, I would like to ask everyone to open their cameras so we can see each other better. Um, so I will start with a, a question for myself. Uh, could mm -hmm. you go back to the superposed epoch analysis, the first one you showed on the ICMEs, and uh, in which you had uh, the first one, I think the very first superposed epoch analysis where you had that the, Yeah, that one. So uh, let's, uh, if you don't mind, let's walk through uh, hypothetical events. So you have an, an ICME that reaches the Earth mm -hmm. magnetosphere. And uh, well, the reduction, the next slide I think has the, now the previous has the, the, the increase, right? There's one before, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. So I had the little impression that the increase is more related to a little faster CMEs and also possessing uh, some uh, BZ, stronger negative BZ. Yes. Is that yes. correct? Yes, is that correct? Uh, we we saw that the for enhancement events, uh, the BZ component is uh, negative, and all, uh, for the almost all cases, and while the reduction cases, sorry, they are positive. It happens for the high CMEs and high speed stream events. So it could well, be could you related give us an, to. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yes. can... I would. I would like you to give some explanation on the physics yeah. that is happening when such events occur. Yeah. This uh, when the busy component uh, are negative, it can help some kind of uh, of reconnection in the magnetic fields. It can. Uh, it can. It it's, can be a source of particles in the. the the magnetic fields of the magnetic the, the magnetic fields, and can inject some particles in in the uh, accelerated particles in the magnetic field that can be later uh, accelerated by the the OLF waves inside the the, the radiation belts. It's, a, it's an hypothesis here, but uh, because uh, we we know that busy components uh, can facilitate the reconnection process, but it's not the only, uh, only thing that guarantees that. But uh, as well, if you, you can see here that an A index, uh, higher and A index here, is, it suggests some auroral uh, activity and uh, uh, auroral current activity, then be, can be related to some uh, uh, process uh, on the, night side of magnetospheres, then it can be related to those injection, injections of particles. And it, 
it, together with the high intensity in the PC5 uh, uh, activity, it could help to diffuse in the magnetospheres and uh, give energy to those particles and replenish the, the magnetic field. But everything, the waves and the pulsations are all supposedly caused by the ICME. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. We, no other internal process. Is, yeah, uh, there, there are uh, several internal processes that can generate those, those waves, but the, the ICME and high speed signal are the driver for this. this. Uh, so uh, let's move on. Uh, there is there are a couple of questions in the at uh, the chat. Uh, more than that. So the first question I didn't really understand very well from Samuel Abaidu. Uh, he is asking about uh, equations. I think in the beginning because the question was very in the first ten minutes of your presentation. So he mentioned about climate change here, and, and but he he wants to know. Uh, um, if the entropy of the universe keeps increasing, so no. <laughs> what make those equations valid? So uh, I don't know if if it's not related. Um, I don't know. Then, then uh, Samuel, you can uh, yeah, have a can private ask chat you. with Jose since we are all from EP. Yeah. So I recommend you to write directly to to. Yeah, to you can, Marquez, you can right? chat more about it. Okay, it's an interesting yeah. question. <laughs> Interesting question, yeah. philosophical. Thank you very much, Samuel. So next question is from Jean Carlos Santos. He is asking, uh, Jean, if you want to ask your own question, just let me know, okay? At the beginning of the talk, if I understood correctly, you claim that particle diffusion is caused by the violation of the third adiabatic invariant associated to flux conservation inside the particle orbit, which is caused by ULF waves. Could you comment on that? Yeah, this kind of uh, uh, diffusion process caused by ULF waves, it violates the, the third uh, the third adiabatic invariant, and they can it is related to inward and outward diffusion that can get, uh, give energy to the, the particles. Right? I I don't know if I understood the question, but uh, we consider the process that. Uh, keep the other uh, the other adiabatic uh, invariants uh, constant, but we know that there are a lot of uh, process uh, happening that can viol violate the second and the first one while the the diffusion are happening. Right? But for this equation here, we consider the the violation of the the third. In the uh, adiabatic invariant. Okay, so the next question again from Gian Santos: uh, Could could the increase of ULF power be associated to flux increase or decrease, but with no causality relation? How can this be verified? Yeah, we the if you. Uh, separate the, the because we, we here we separate the events uh, only the events that there 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 are uh, changes in flux after the the the, the interaction with the solar wind structure right so we did not that you not say that it's uh, directed related but it could could be uh, related to the solar wind structure that generate those, those waves. And then the flux variability could be related to interaction, right? Okay. So uh, are there any more questions or comments? Anyone wants to ask or say? I don't Let see me it. ask a question. Yeah. So, Go on. Yeah. So, so Jose, you, you have not distinguished between the Features for CMEs, for, for example, ICMEs. Yeah. You have yes. not to look at for the orientation or yeah, for the is... mechanism for generate the shift fields. Do, do you expect some of the 
patterns, different patterns that you observe be related to this? Yes, they could, they could, it, it could uh, uh, give us a different pattern if you consider the orientation of uh, some shock in the magnetosphere and something like that. This could be a future work that we can separate this, the, this all a bunch of events and analyze it separately uh, when the there are some orientation, different orientation, the, the, the high CMEs on the, the, the interplanetary magnetic field. It could be interesting to, to analyze that. But for now, we did not consider that on this analysis. But it, we expected some different results if we separate this. It could be helpful in the for the models and the particle diffusion if you consider yes. this. And right. what about more complex uh, interactions between ICMEs and also yeah. between the ICMEs and FS streams yeah. high speed? Yeah, here we try to, to separate those uh, complex events. We uh, uh, selected the events that are not uh, happening at the same time, right? But yes, uh, I, I had on case study uh, I'm, 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 I'm uh, doing. Uh, 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 as well, uh, uh, studying a complex case event that an ICME and a high speed stream uh, occur at, at one after another, one after the other. And you can see the, the, this rapid decrease caused by the, the CME, and after that, a um, uh, uh, small enhancement that could be associated so, with some localize it and some diffusive process but we are trying to uh, understand more the, uh, about that but is is a very interesting topic to study other point that may be interesting Marquez, could you comment about the uh, applications for the patterns that you have recognized it for uh, pre pre predictability to forecast or not cast yeah. of the conditions. Right, it, we can apply that if if you detect this structure and then the, the interplanetary magnetic field, we can apply some model, diffusion, diffusion models as well as neural network models uh, to try to the power spectrum density in the, the, the magnetospheres, right? Uh, and it's, uh, it's good to, to separate our our uh, our, uh, our data and and try to model specifically for different cases in the solar wind uh, uh, solar wind uh, the for, for solar wind uh, parameters right you can uh, separate the more uh, in the better way the, the events in the solar wind to model our our structures especially for the uh, lower intensity geomagnetic activity in the, the magnetosphere. Right? It could help the, improve the models for the not the lower geomagnetic activity. That's nice. So thank you very much, Jose. Sorry, okay. I'd like to make a question. May I? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, hi, Marquez. Hi, hi David. Yeah, I'd and like I to know. Seen, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are lots of people here. <laughs> I'd like to know if you if you think or if you have if the if those particles which are more energetic than two MeV uh, can show the same pattern for the for the same uh, solar wind um, right solar wind parameters. A, did you did good... you check for that? I check for my own. So I, yes. I, have, I have this, so I I, have, I did not uh, made the, the the same plots right, but they they presented different patterns. They for some cases that are enhancement for the higher uh, energy, and uh, there's a not so high in, in intensity so on the enhancement, and they decrease more rapidly. So it's I, I have to to study more about that. I I'm I'm planning to do that for the lower energy and the higher energy uh, patterns, right? I I 
I separate okay. that and just I, I I did a quick look to the, this data, but I can I cannot so, say more than that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. It's just a, a yeah, kind of curiosity <laughs> because I know that you have yes. de uh, dealing with a lot of data, and but uh, I have this could... this data, and I'm I'm, I'm planning to do that. Mm -hmm. And I see. So the 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 thing that you that you realized. Is that the pattern could be a little, a little, yeah, bit a little, different from a little that, bit different from, from that. that you present yes. today? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The the times are different, right? You mean there the is time, a time lag? Yeah. Between the solar winds. Yeah. Solar I mean, the now I, the I cannot say certain. for sure that because I just okay. uh, did a quick look, but there All are right. some different patterns. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I think we don't have any more questions uh, in the chat. Uh, so at this point, I would like to uh, thank uh, the audience for staying with us today. And a uh, particular thank to Jose Marquez for this very nice presentation. And um, keep up the good work. <laughs> it's uh, nice to see you doing a lot of progress and uh, having other future ideas. And uh, so on uh, behalf of INPI and on the Space Geophysics Postgraduate Program and on the Research and Heliophysics Project from CAPES, I would like to thank again the speaker and the audience and uh, wish you all to stay at home, stay safe, and uh, let's be patient that this pandemic will go away sometime. So please, let's be safe at home. Thank yeah. you very much and thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Well. <laughs> Bye.